Hello, and welcome to Just Hoops. Now that it's March, it's time to dive into college basketball and one of the best mid-major teams this season, the College of Charleston Cougars. 31-3 season, winning both the regular season and conference tournament of the Colonial. They're one of the best mid-major teams in the country. Under Pat Kelsey, they dominated this season, and now it's their time to dance. Here are their defensive stats this season. 67.4 points per game. They had the 29th defensive rating at 94.5. They were fourth in rebounds per game at 40.5 and first in total rebounds at 1377. Along with that, they're forcing turnovers, blocking shots, and overall just being a solid, stout defense. Now it's time to dive into the film and see what makes this defense so dominant and special at the collegiate level. This defense is all about the point of attack. In this first clip, let's look at it. The way that everybody's down in their stance, ball is activated, hands are active, the feet are chopping. They're just trying to mirror the ball, make a play happen at the point. And you can see in this one clip, it happens every time somebody touches the ball. Every individual defender takes their job personally, attacks it with high attention to detail, and it allows them to be successful as a team. As we keep going through this video though, you can see that it is just a part of their identity and DNA that everyone is going to get in a stance, have their hands out and active, feet in a spot where they can react and slide. Everybody guards their yard to the highest ability to them as an individual, but it allows them as a defense to be highly successful. The amount of ball pressure and the amount of just force that they apply at the point of attack is special, and it definitely is what has allowed them to be so successful this season and compete against anyone any given night. Just flying around, making plays, and being a high-pressure defense also translates to how they guard in ball screen actions. They're a hard to heavy show defense. They'll go flat depending on the angle of the screen and where it's coming from, but most of the time, it's a hard show. Get out there, be a force at the point, make the ball handler bounce back and make a decision, and just it's another way that they could apply pressure at the point of attack and also not expose themselves on the backside because they do a great job at rotating that we'll talk about later, but just the way that they always apply that pressure at the point of attack. Applying this amount of pressure to the ball every given time down the floor allows a ton of opportunities for playmaking to happen, like they're a charge, and in these upcoming clips you'll see tip passes, force turnovers, block shots, and more charges. Just the way that everyone on the floor at any given moment can make a play happen to the defensive end just because of how much they take to the attention of detail of guarding their yard, guarding their matchup. They're not a switching team, so typically a lot of the guys know their matchup, understand what they like to do, where they wanna go, and it allows them to be highly successful when guarding their guy. I really like what Pat Kelsey has done here at just applying force, applying pressure, and this allows their defense to just be all over and completely disrupt an offense. The activity and energy that this first line of defense gives on a nightly basis can definitely cause issues in the tournament. With the amount of pressure that they apply at the point of attack, the gaps are a huge part of them being successful this season. The way that they're able to fly around, get stunts in, deny, and just be a high pressure defense at the second level allows the first level to be as good as it is. In this first clip here, you see that the denials, the stunts, the different things that they do in the gaps make it very difficult for an offense to get into their action flow and just have good offense overall. This clip here in the CAA championship it's a great example of what they do in the gaps. Everything's denial that next pass really make it difficult, especially when a four and five man has the ball. They're going to get up, deny, break up the offense. Anything that's next pass is a denial immediately, just pushing the offense out, making it more difficult. That's a great example there of how they apply pressure in the gaps. As we continue, though, you can see that overall, everyone stays with their guy. There's not a lot of switching off the ball. They like denying to force the offense out. It it makes an offensive player one-on-one -on -one have to be good enough to get a tough bucket against their individual defense. But the way that they fly around in the gaps and deny and pressure, they know when they can stunt. They like blowing up handoffs when they have the opportunity to. It's just all about being able to apply that pressure that they do at the point in a one-on-one -on -one situation in an off-ball situation. The one thing about their gap defense, though, is how that they are very one-on-one. -on -one. They don't send help and stunts often, but when they do, it's part of just a necessity. They like making the ball handler have to worry about them and not know exactly what's coming. That clip there, the gap stunt is forcing a turnover. As we continue, though, it's just 
part of their DNA to force turnovers, be aggressive, and the way that they fly around in the gap is a huge reason why. Another thing that I want to talk about in terms of their gap defense is how they guard these off-ball actions. In this, these clips here, mostly Towson, they run a lot of floppy actions, and you can see the lock and chase attitude that they have. It's staying connected to their guy, flying around, and trying to make a play on that guy. But at the end of the day, they're all about just staying connected to yours, whether or not you have to leave him for a second and go through or over a screen just to get back in front of him get in his spot to guard individually, and make a play happen from there. The way the Cougars are such an aggressive point of attack defense, it translates directly to how they are in the gaps, denying, flying around, pressuring, and it's seen in these off-ball actions also. Just the high level of attention to detail and pressure and individual just pride that they have on the defensive end is excellent to watch. And the last key to the defense I want to talk about is the low man. When you're applying this amount of pressure at the first and second levels, you need a safety behind you and somebody that's willing and able to protect the basket when things go down. And that's the low man. The low man is responsible as that last line of defense to make stuff happen, prevent offenses from getting these easy opportunities on an easy basis. Just the guy that is able to plug the rim block shots, force turnovers, wall up, and just be a solid presence down there, along with helping them be the best rebounding team that they can possibly be and one of the best rebounding teams in the country. The low man in all these clips is there on drives, on actions, when needed. The pressure is applied at the first and second levels, but when they get beat because pressure tends to get beat by cuts and sometimes on drives, the low man is there and ready and active and willing to make a play. That clip there, 11 was floating the weak side of the floor and plugging the rim. This clip here against Stony Brook, you can see on the weak side of the floor how they like zoning up. The low man is typically going to float the block area, be ready, and the top side guy is going to be at the elbow area. But overall, they ended up with all the cuts and stuff happening. The low man is connected to his, but in a spot to help win the drive or when the cut happens. The pressure aspect of this defense also applies to how the low man comes in. The timing of his ability to plug that rim area has forced turnovers. These next couple of clips, you see him coming in, picking off a pass to the roller or diver or cutter, and just being a playmaker at the rim, forcing turnovers, making stuff happen just because he's putting himself in a spot to make a play happen. I really like how Pat Kelsey is allowed his defense to be that one-on-one -on -one aggressive point of attack, but also knowing when and how to allow his guys in help to come over, flood the lane, and also drop behind. They do a great job in rotation at allowing that low man to come in, plug the rim, and behind him having guys rotate and drop and wheel around to allow there to be easy access for the help to get in, make a play happen without having to worry about his. At the end of the day, they're a playmaking pressure defense and having somebody that is willing and able to step in and plug the rim and prevent shots from happening there is a huge part of their success. The way the Cougars are connected, active, and forceful at this end of the floor has what allowed them to have a 30-win season and get themselves in the dance. The College of Charleston's defense is one of the best in college basketball. The way they fly around, they pressure the point, they're highly connected, highly active, and the way that they make plays for each other at this end of the floor is a huge reason for their big time success this season. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, learned something about the College of Charleston and their defense. For more content like this, please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll catch you in the next one.